The British military accounts for half of all UK government emissions. According to its own figures, it generates over two and a half million tonnes of CO2, about the same as half a million cars. Annually, its planes and helicopters burn 460 million litres of fuel, and the energy bill for the three services runs to nearly £350 million a year. The UK was the first major economy in the world to pass laws making it a legal requirement for organisations to be net zero by 2050. And last year, the Ministry of Defence, for the first time, published a strategy on climate change and sustainability. It was written by Lieutenant General Richard Nugy, a Royal Artillery officer and the military's first climate champion. Now retired, I met him at Westdown Camp near Salisbury Plain to hear why he thinks the British military can and must go green. I assumed I would get a significant battle in getting this in. And, and when I first started uh, this in the military, um, somebody, turned, somebody senior turned around to me and said, oh, we'll be exempt all this, won't we, because we're the military. And that has been our attitude to an awful lot of it, that we'll just be exempt to this. Um, and my earlier response was no. My response now, somewhat facetiously, is, well, you can't be exempt from the world, nor should we want to be. I think if you look at the younger members of the armed forces, the younger members of the Ministry of Defence in our civil service, this is, they are passionate. You think I'm passionate? They are uber passionate. They're over passionate about it. They, they really, really care about this. And so I think that the groundswell of opinion is that actually we need to do something about this. And I think that is growing. Militaries around the world are big contributors to climate change. The supply chains that equip them are also large emitters. It's estimated the US military alone has produced more than a billion tonnes of greenhouse gases since the start of the so-called War on Terror in 2001. General Nugent's report set out a list of ambitions for the British military, behaviour changes he believes can help it achieve net zero. They include embedding sustainability and recycling into military culture to minimise waste and increase the lifespan of equipment, implementing new net zero construction standards and including the price of disposal and carbon emissions in working out how much a building really costs throughout its life. And making the UK Armed Forces a global leader in climate change and security, supporting other militaries and building what General Nugent calls a coalition of the willing. The necessity for the military to embrace green technology and the challenge of climate change, why should it? Climate change is happening to us whether we like it or not. Um, uh, we've seen from the floods in Germany, from the, the, the massive heat wave in uh, North America, that actually climate um, is uh, beginning to change around us. Um, if you look at the science, it's incredibly obvious why. Um, we've heated up the sea, um, that produces more condensation, you get much, much bigger clouds and, and stronger rain. Um, it may be the same amount of rain, but it's coming in much, much bigger dollops, if you like. Um, so it's happening around us. We in the military pride ourselves on being able to work in the environment within which we are operating and to be able to maximise our opportunity within that. So if our equipment doesn't work because it's too hot for it to work, if our equipment doesn't work because the surface sea temperature has, has risen to a level which it doesn't cool our engines anymore, if, if, if our training can't happen because Salisbury Plain is on fire, um, because wildfires have happened, because it's so dry, because we've had a drought, because that's the other side of it. We get tons and tons of water in very short time and drought the rest of the time. That's how climate change is going to affect us. Then we need to operate. We need to think about how to deal with that. So what climate targets is the British military trying to achieve? Well, the Royal Air Force has set a goal to be net zero by 2040 and have a completely clean aircraft flying by the end of this decade. The Royal Navy too believes it can reduce its emissions by up to 40% in the same period by introducing hybrid engines. As for the Army, well it plans to plant around 2 million trees across its estate and build 80 new solar farms. The fact is we are in unprecedented times apart from the only time the world's done this before was 55 million years ago. 80% of species were destroyed. 55 million years ago, when the world got as hot as we're about to get, or potentially have the opportunity to get. We reduced emissions last year by 17%. Fantastic. We've already overreached that in 2021. We're more than 17%, so our emissions this year are bigger than they were in 2019. So, so it was a temporary blip, and we have not been able to um, uh, take advantage. And look what we had to do to get to 17%. We stopped everything. You know, that's not an answer. 
Dr Richard Milburn lectures on environmental security at King's College London and is also an army reservist. He believes the services can achieve something approaching net zero, but to do it they need to regard climate change in the same way as other military adversaries. So I think it can be done. Um, it needs involvement at all ranks and at all levels. I think there's a real danger it becomes too much of a top-down um, process. The historical innovation within the military has always been very good, that sort of life or death um, element. Um, and when you're at war, the, the money that flows in, the creativity that flows in, the sort of spirit of Bletchley Park. We need to be going back to that and bringing it to bear. So I think there's got to be more confidence within the mod to say, actually, this is a national security issue, therefore, um, mod should be getting to grips with it. It needs to reach out, not only regulars, also reserves, and then also into the civilian space and at all ranks. It absolutely can be done, but I think it has to go back to almost Churchill's corkscrew thinkers of World War II, um, and that was around the, the Bletchley Park. People that think differently, putting them in rooms with engineers and scientists and saying, what about, what about, what about, and really, really driving uh, that change. Campaign groups claim UK defence produces a lot more CO2 than it's obliged to report. They believe it's around 11 million tonnes, not three. They estimate that globally militaries and their supply chains create 6% of all emissions. I don't think it's a light bulb moment. So Lindsay Cottrell is from an environmental think tank that examines the impact time. of conflict. How does she view the military's new impetus to go green? It's excellent to hear policies and initiatives um, moving forward, but that we want to make sure that they are supported by true actions on the ground and, um, you know, We've said about transparency of reporting so that we can see that um, what's being said will be is actually delivered. Um, because there's, you know, there's a lot of talk within the commercial sector about the risk of greenwashing. And obviously, you know, that can also happen in any other sector, including the military. The MOD are already reporting um, greenhouse gas emissions as part of their annual report. And that is focused on the estate and kind of business travel, as you said before. The big thing really is seeing how you can include the fuel use for you know, operational capacity and also um, the supply chain, which um, can be about four times even more um, when you consider that all of that. And I know that, you know, that again is a big area to start addressing um, and it will be difficult because the MOD have got obviously a very complex and a large supply chain, but it's, it's not not doable. Under the 2015 Paris Agreement on climate change, countries don't have to report their military's greenhouse gas emissions. It's voluntary. But what does this magical net zero look like? Will the military really be expected to fully achieve it? It, in many ways, you know, human society is not net zero in and of itself. Uh, you know, a human being cannot, I mean, the planet is, but the, the human beings cannot be net zero. At the end of the day, I give out carbon dioxide, uh, you know, and I don't emit oxygen. Uh, but there's a balance to be had in what that is. So it isn't as if, uh, you know, defence or government or, or us as a society need to be completely, um, you know, carbon neutral or, or, or try to reach this this mythical net zero there is a small amount of course that the planet can cope with and can uh, absorb uh, and this is some of the other part of the equation that you know really when we talk about greening anything uh, or sustainability of anything we're not looking very much at the regenerative nature of the planet to be able to take in more uh, carbon dioxide General Nugi would like the UK military to set the benchmark on sustainability. He also believes any initiatives the armed forces undertake must bring capability and financial benefits. Greening the services on ethical grounds alone isn't enough. So I would argue, somewhat controversially perhaps, the moral high ground is the argument that environmentalists have used for 20 years and it hasn't worked. When it gets into the finance boardroom, it doesn't work. And so it's not enough and it won't work if you're comparing the moral high ground and a financial outcome. The financial outcome will always win through. That's the way that we are organised, particularly in the public sector, where we need to take desperate care of taxpayers' money. We've got to spend it wisely. So it's not enough. You need a really good, solid business argument for doing this, in my view. That's how it works in the military. Now, if you've got a moral argument on top of that, fantastic. And um, there is such a strong moral argument that it always ought to be part of the equation. 
but it's not enough. And I think that's where we need to go. For the general, the key to lowering the military's emissions will be two things, culture and technology. He says this isn't a crusade. First and foremost, he remains a soldier and the forces must still be able to fight and win. What level of net zero they can achieve by 2050 is open for debate, but unquestionably there is a move to drastically reduce emissions. A challenge General Nuji believes the MOD can win if it brings military skills, planning and precision to bear on the biggest battle of our time. Simon Newton, Forces News, Salisbury Plain. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.